Hello everybody, Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today we're going to be talking about Tile Engine. Now you'll notice at the top here, I called it Tile Engine. It's actually Till Engine, which I think is meant to be Tile Engine. But basically this is a now open source, uh, cross-platform 2D graphics engine for creating classic and retro games with tile maps, sprites, and palettes. Its scanline based rendering system makes raster effects a core feature, the same used on actual 2D graphics chips. So for those of you that uh, can't read it there, I just read the first paragraph for you. But essentially the whole idea behind tile engine is to create retro style games and specifically trying to emulate some of the old effects we saw back in the super nintendo days where you saw things like faux 3d mode 7 effects um and super uh, the sega super scalar transformation effects back in the day um, this engine is all about trying to recreate them. Now, the examples come in C, but there are a number of different language uh, bindings. I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about exactly what this engine does, but you can see here some of the products that have been created with it, or some of the demos that have been created with it. So if you're trying to recreate that retro sprite look, this might be the perfect um, graphics library for you. Now, I actually did a hands-on with this uh, the library uh, last year at some point, early last year, I think, uh, with my hands on with Tile Engine. And in that case, I actually spelt it right. So congratulations to me on that one. So I'm not going to get into a whole lot of details about how to use this library, because if you want to learn more about using it, uh, do watch this video, which I will toss in the link down below. No, what we are here today to talk about is this. Tile Engine has now gone open source. Now, it was open source before, sort of. And one of the big hangups I got, if you go through the comments on this thing, there's a lot of people actually basically talking about how it's not actually fully over open source. The underlying rendering layer wasn't. So it used to be available under the MIT license for the outer stuff, but the rendering layer was proprietary. So that really kind of turned people off using it. Well, what the developer has just done with the release of Tile Engine 2.0 is released it under the lesser GNU public license. Now, LGPL, uh, this one is a complicated license. I'm not going to do it justice here. But essentially, if you modify the source code, you have to release all of your modifications to the source code. It's not as strict as the GPL. Um, but there are definitely limitations there. You basically can't uh, derive a commercial source project from it, uh, for example. So if you're going to create your own game framework um, and you want to redistribute the source with it, you would have to distribute your source under the LGPL as well. Uh, so it's really kind of one of those source licenses that encourages the source to stay open and derived work sources to stay open. But for the most part, it's not that limiting. If you create a game using Tile Engine, for example, you don't actually have to release the source code for it. You just have to release the source code changes for the engine itself. So do be aware of that and look up the LGPL um, if you're interested in more information. I actually did a video on the various open source licenses. So what the hell, I'll toss that down below as well. Uh, but this is kind of nice to see. You can see his justification for uh, releasing it under this library. It is now available. Uh, the GitHub project does not include pre-built binaries or external dependencies anymore. Uh, if you want to, if you don't want to build the library yourself, the official place to get the pre-built libraries is on the itch.io profile. Now I will toss this link here and this link in turn has the link to the GitHub page and the download. So if you want to get started with Tiled Engine, uh, you can go to the source code right here on GitHub or you can go to itch.io, which hopefully has been updated at this point. It said the new 2.0 which is the release is nearly the same as 1.2 one but has new features abilities to create multiple instances of the engine and switch between them with global context mechanisms. so the change between the 2.0 and the 1.0 version other than the license is very very minor but uh under the lgpl you're going to want to make sure you grab that new 2.0 version so again you can grab the binaries with dependencies right here off itch.io or you can go get the source code here off GitHub. And I will toss all these links down below, as well as my link to the hands-on video. So if you want to learn more about Tile Engine or getting started with it, uh, that video walks through actually creating some code using Visual Studio for um, yeah, creating a, a sprite kind of game. Uh, it's been a long time since I actually watched it, so I should do that again. And I'll also toss below the video about the... Um, uh, open source licenses. So if you're looking for the differences there, uh, that video kind of goes into a bit of the detail about what the various different options are out there and explains in a little bit more detail exactly what LGPL is all about. But it's kind of cool to see another project go open source like this. If you are into that whole retro 16-bit look, but you're looking for a slightly more advanced graphics uh, library that kind of replicates that scan line look of back in the days and, and the functionality that you could get from stuff like uh, dedicated Genesis and SNES hardware. 
Tile Engine may be the right one for you, and cool enough, it is now under the LGPL. All right, that's it for now. I hope you uh, found that useful or interesting. Have you ever used Tile Engine? Uh, did the license turn you off from before, or are you excited about it now? Do you got a favorite open source license? Personally, I'm not a huge GPL fan. I'm kind of more down with like MIT or Zlib licenses. Those are the ones that kind of say, hey, do what you want. But I understand why if I actually developed my own code, I would release it under the LGPL because I wouldn't want people to just take my code, repackage it, and sell it as their own. So I, I can understand why a developer would definitely want to release under the LGPL. It's a way of encouraging more people to contribute more open source, especially if they're deriving from your work. So I can understand that there, but also let me know your favorite license down below. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.